Hello and welcome to My Astronomy Nights, I'm Derek and in this video I'm looking at Lyra's Messier catalogue members. Now the constellation of Lyra is quite small and is placed between Cygnus and Hercules but it does have some wonderful objects to observe within it including two of the Messier catalogue members, M56 and M57. Now M56 is a faint globular cluster about halfway between Cygnus and Lyra and then M57 is the famous Ring Nebula. Now they're both within about five and a half degrees of each other and really well placed this time of year for some late summer observing. Now to locate these two objects we'll start with M57, it's the most straightforward. You just need to find that really bright star of Vega to place the constellation of Lyra and then we're looking for that parallelogram that sits below that star. Now on the bottom of that is Gamma and Beta Lyra, this is Sulifat and Shalayak and you want to get the halfway point between both of those stars and that's where Messier 57 is located. It'll show up as a nice little bright smoke ring and then you can really put some magnification on it to spot it. So then on the other hand M56 it's a little trickier to find, you want to go halfway between uh, Beta Cygni, that's um, Alberio, uh, that lovely double star, the gold and blue double star and Sulifat in Lyra and that's about four degrees and you'll see an asterism there it's like the number seven and the base star of that is a lovely little orange star of um, magnitude 5.9 and then towards the west of that there's another blue star which is magnitude 7.9 and halfway between both of those that's um, Messier 56 right there that little haze. Now the Ring Nebula was added to Messier's catalogue as the 57th member in 1779 and it's just one of those wonderful objects that you can observe in the night nice sky. It's quite small, it's just one by one and a half arc minutes but it has a really good brightness at magnitude 8.8 .8, and it has that really distinct little uh, smoke ring effect. In reality this is about a light year in diameter and it's sitting at 2000 light years from us. Now this was created when a star expelled its outer gas shells and it creates that nebula from our point of view and what's left is a little white dwarf at the centre which is shining at around magnitude 14 but that obscuring gas from the nebula itself just makes it a tricky observation but it does show up in long uh, exposure photographs. And now there's another object nearby that also shows up in long exposure photographs and that's a little barred spiral galaxy just about four arc minutes away from the ring nebula. Now it shows up, it's about magnitude 13 or so and it shows up really well even though the fact is it's at 240 million light years away. So M56 was added to Messier's catalogue in 1779 alongside the Ring Nebula. He observed it as a small little cloud but when William Herschel got his telescope on it later he was able to resolve it to a globular cluster. Now it's quite small and faint, it's magnitude 8.3 and it just measures about 7 arc minutes across. When you observe it, it sits between the little blue and orange star which are just under a degree apart. So it looks to me like a really faint stretched out version of Messier 13, the Hercules cluster. This is one of the oldest globular clusters you can observe. It's 13 billion years old and it sits at 32,000 light years from us. So capturing the data for the photographs on these, I was using my 200 PDS, but I used my GH5 color camera on it, and it was all tracking on top of my NEQ6 Skywatcher mount. Now using the color camera, I was able to just put it on for two full nights on the Ring Nebula, and then for M56, I just done a single night. I was able to pull out some really nice color in the background of these with the blue and orange stars, which is the main thing I wanted to show up in the contrast of M56. And then in the Ring Nebula, I was trying to see if I could get that central star and the small little IC1296, the Bard Spiral Galaxy. So for my observing sessions on M57 and M56, I was using my 12 inch daub and I also used my small refractor as well to see if I could pinpoint them. In my small refractor, it was very easy to pick up that number seven asterism and then I was able to see that faint little haze of M56 sitting between those two colorful stars. And then for the Ring Nebula, it framed um, Gamma and Beta Lyra really well, and I could pick up that tiny little oval of the Ring Nebula, but I couldn't see the darker patch at the center. So I moved on to my 12 inch Dobsonian then, and with this, the Ring Nebula is just fantastic. It shows up extremely well in it, 
but I found a good technique is to observe a dimmer target beforehand and you can pull out a little bit more detail in that ring structure. So for this one, I decided to observe some fainter planetary nebula in Aquila and Cygnus. And then when it came to the ring nebula afterwards, it just showed up extremely bright compared to if I just went observing it first. For observing M56, I was able to locate that asterism of the number seven quite easily within my finder scope. And then it frames it really well with the orange and the blue star either side. It looks to me like a really stretched out faint version of M13 with those two colorful stars either side. Uh, within my small refractor it was very faint but then when I had it in my 12 inch Dobsonian it looked really well and I was able to resolve it down to the centre of those stars. So for my observing sessions of M56 and 57 I was primarily using my 12 inch Dobsonian. Uh, I did however observe the ring nebula on multiple occasions before this and a really good observation with an 8 inch Dobsonian when you have a wide field eyepiece like a 32 millimeter 72 degree you can frame gamma and beta lyra just on either side of the frame with the ring nebula centered it's a really nice star field to observe as well when it's on it to see that little oval but this target once you start adding magnification to it, it really improves it and you start to resolve that center darkness to it to get that smoke ring effect a good way to observe it as well is to observe something much more faint uh, prior to observing it. You tend to pull out more detail in that ring structure then once you've been observing and your eye has gotten used to it. Now there is a central star and a small galaxy nearby. I haven't been able to resolve these, but the more magnification I added onto it, it worked really well up to about 200 magnification and you could really see that structure of the gas. Now for M56, this one frames really nicely in wide field eyepiece on the 300 PDS, my 12 inch. And you can see that lovely little gold and blue star sitting either side of the field of frame. And once again, to me, this looks like a really stretched out dim version of the Hercules cluster. With some magnification on it, you can really resolve some of those central stars and resolve it right down to its core. But it is, however, quite a faint little globular cluster. So M57 and M56 are really nice targets to observe this time of year. Being only five and a half degrees apart, they're in a nice part of the sky where you can just train your telescope on it for a whole night. M57 is just wonderful to observe. It holds up really well under magnification and you can get some really good detail out of it. Now I haven't been able to see that little faint galaxy that's nearby, but I think I'll have to get a really good night of seeing to confirm that I can't see this one. And then M56, uh, just four degrees away or so is a really nice little globular cluster to get in off your Messier catalog list. Now I look forward to hearing about your observations of what you were able to see or not see and uh, until next time, clear skies!